actually, I had my truth isn't truth moment. I was visiting a large European company with my MBA students. We had a full day with the purchasing teams and one of the purchasing managers kept tell telling stories about how she treated her suppliers during negotiations. And I must say that it was rather hostile, so I felt the need to ask her, do you really lie that often to your suppliers? Without a moment of hesitation, she responded, I wouldn't call it lying, but bluffing. And that made me think a lot on my way home. Could it be that Bluffing and lying are seen as two very different things in B2B negotiations. What would the difference be? And how does it play out? First, business negotiations constitute a key element of supply chain interaction. Second, those negotiations can render the parties vulnerable to deception. Negotiations in SEM are fertile grounds for deceptive behavior. And third, there is a variety of deceptive practices, but research has not yet distinguished among and investigated the different types of deception that occur in SEM contexts. We first wanted to conceptualize and operationalize bluffs and lies, so two different types of deception. Second, we wanted to get into the heads of both the target or victim and the actor, that is the liar or bluffer. What is different for you as a liar versus a bluffer? And do targets of bluffs and lie differ in their reactions? We used social cognitive theory and moral disengagement theory. Both have been developed chiefly by Albert Bandura, whose work has been cited more than 500 times, 500,000 times, according to Google Scholar. Whereas ethical theories typically are prescriptive in nature, social cognitive theory is predictive, focusing on how humans actually behave rather than how they ought to behave. Research has not done much to really differentiate different types of deception. Most of the research on bluffing focuses on normative ethics. Previously, bluffs have been conceptualized based on their content. You find works that define bluffs as false announcements or misleading signaling. Others define them as false threats, sometimes also including false promises or misrepresenting one's bargaining position. Basically, we say it's in the eye of the beholder. Departing from content-based definitions, we define bluffs and lies as convention-dependent, norms-based constructs. Bluffs, therefore, are deceptions that are palatable or acceptable to both parties in a negotiation. And lies are not palatable or acceptable in a business a negotiation to the parties involved in it. We operationalized bluffs and lies in two studies, a Q-sort and a best-worst scaling. For the Q-sort, we asked experienced negotiators to sort prototype examples of bluffs and lies. For example, is it more of a lie or rather a bluff if I promise to a supplier that our purchasing volume for the next year will be higher 
while I know it will actually not be higher. For the uh, best worst scaling, we asked less experienced participants. The result was a pretty consistent view of what constitutes a bluff versus a lie. In further studies, we then found that bluffers show low degrees of moral disengagement and liars show high degrees of moral disengagement. That means when I bluff, I feel that I do not violate my own moral standards. The reaction of the victims was very much in line with how we all typically react. When we have been bluffed, we slap our foreheads and say, how could I be so stupid? That is self-directed anger. When someone lies to us, we are very angry at the liar, that is other-directed anger. Also, we tend to be willing to negotiate in the future with a bluffer, but we are highly reluctant to engage further with a liar. Oh yeah, future research is definitely needed on bluffing versus lying in different cultures. That is national cultures, but also company cultures or industries. We found uh, behaviors that constitute bluffs versus lies according to Western social convention. Like for all socially constructed things, this may change when you change the population or the context. Again, this may not only vary on national levels. Uh, just think of the construction industry versus medtech, for example. In a related study that was recently published in the Journal of Purchasing and Supply Management, we found that corporate codes reduce the propensity to lie but not the propensity to bluff. In other words, they reduce severe types of deception, but not all types or deceptions per se. We also see that in the company where the research idea was actually born. I recently had the chance to present our results in that company, and one category manager said, you know what, Lutz, I have never looked at bluffing in negotiations that closely. But if I follow your definition, I'd say bluffing is about 80% of what I'm doing in my negotiations. Wow. More work to be done, people.